We've used a little egg carton to make our molds this time. And uh, we happen to have two different things going on in the kiln here. We have one set of these sitting around loose. These are the ash bits from Wheaton Labs. And then we also have in here a crucible, which is full of the sample of ash from the Sierra. And uh, we'll just get to see how that heats up. We do have more ash from Wheaton Labs that we can put into the crucible as a second firing as well, if we want to. And of course, just for fun, my wife made some little clay pots from the clay here at Wheaton Labs. And um, to prove that it is clay, and so we are going to fire those. Um, that's pot one. Here's pot two. Yes, these are finger pots. It's okay. Um, and <clears throat> the kiln is set up so that that crucible is right in the middle of the hottest of uh, gases rising up. In fact, it's sitting right there, so the gases will have to go around it and wrap around it. So um, that should get hot enough. We've got a giant pile, relatively giant pile, of uh, very small sticks uh, to feed in. Very small because the smaller the stick, the hotter the fire in a rocket stove. Um, and we'll be monitoring that. We'll take this up to hopefully in the range of 1400 centigrade. Yes, that's really hot. And then we will uh, pull them out, let them cool, see if we can make cement. That's what's happening. Very exciting. Questions, anyone? <laughs> oh, 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 I have questions. Yes, yes, yes Uncle yeah. Mud. <laughs> mm, so the, uh, what is the species of tree you said that, that you, you... I will have to figure that out exactly. Um, but I believe it is, um, it's a pine, maybe a fir that grows in the Lake Tahoe area. All right. So, and it has this very thick red bark. Yeah. Our engineer, Sarah, was saying how there was some trees that had more calcium That's in correct. them than others. And that might be of assistance. And... Um, yes. Um, and so um, our source for that um, is a group of very clever Norwegian scientists trying to figure out how to use wood ash. Um, as a substitute for cement and um, they studied a very small set of trees available in Norway for biomass heating as far as I could tell and wondering if we could if they could take that ash and make it into something next and um, in their sample the the trees uh, varied, the species varied in terms of the amount of calcium that they had as well as other minerals um, and also silica. And what was quite interesting is that um, they had an unspecified pine, and so it's just pine wood versus pine bark in terms of what the content of the ash was. And the pine bark was significantly higher in calcium, three to four times higher. And so this, of course, brings up that possibility that around here, um, A, it's not the right kind of tree, possibly the not right kind of soil. And then also, largely what is burned around here is the inner whitewood, because we, the inner whitewood works better inside of a rocket stove. So um, the ash here may simply be deficient in the minerals that are required. We'll find out. All right. Ready to close it up? Let's close it up. Let's close it up and get this thing lit up. Yeah. We could always use this. Uh, we were talking about this the other night. We could always use this kiln to uh, fire up a bunch of uh, chicken bones or something. Absolutely. I think that um, one of the next phases in this project would be to figure out what sort of additives we could use to make up for the absence in calcium in the ash here. Yeah. And um, chicken bones, um, or any animal bones, burned down for that matter, would be a fine solution.
I usually close the top off when I do That's that. That's a good idea. Go that way. There it goes. It's figured it out already. And it's roaring along. Getting rockety already. Yeah. Yeah, so if your rocket stove does not sound something like a rocket, it's not uh, maybe working right. 